Welcome back to the FTN NFL Team Preview Series. I'm your host, Mike Randall, and X followed me at Randall Rant. The NFL Team Preview Series is sponsored, of course, by Boom Fantasy, top choice for daily fantasy sports. Boom Fantasy is innovative games. They cater casual to hardcore fan, and you can win up to 500 times your entry only at Boom Fantasy. Download on the App Store or Google Play. Use that promo code FTN to get a no-sweat bonus up to $100. And today we talk about the Rams. Folks, the Rams were a team that surprised last year, very competitive, did well, and are looking to make even more noise this year. The only person I talked to were great to have Adam Grossbard. You can follow him on X at Adam Grossbard. He's the Rams beat writer for the OC Register inside SoCal Sports. Does a fantastic job. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to kick it off here and get going. Let's start with the backfield. Kyron Williams, fantastic. You know, here in the fantasy community, he won people a lot of titles. Can we believe in him again? Is Blake Corum going to be a 50-50 split, or is it something where you're just going to have to see if Williams gets hurt? I know he has some injury issues. What say you here on the Rams' backfield? So I think, first of all, Kyron is never going to be the guy that he was for that first six, seven-week stretch where he was going like 95% of the snaps. Like Sean talked, Sean McVay talked about it last year. Like that's not sustainable in today's NFL. That being said, I'm not expecting a 50-50 snap. Kyron is still very much the starter. He gives them a lot of really good juice. Honestly, that run game might be improved this year after the changes the Rams made on the offensive line. They signed sure. Jonah Jackson uh, to to play left guard away from the Lions. They kicked Steve Avila into center after he had a really successful rookie year, but he has a lot of center experience from his days at TCU. So I think you're going to see – you know, Kyron have a really successful season. It might be slightly different volume, but he should get some really good looks, especially, you know, just with the balance of this offense. They also added a pass blocking tight end and Colby Park or uh, yes. run blocking tight end and Colby Parkinson. Uh, that'll help open things up for them while Tyler Higby's hurt. Um, maybe you see Corum get some of the goal line snaps. That was what he was really big about at Michigan. Um, he might get a drive here and there throughout games too, just to give Kyron some rest because like you said, Kyron does have those injury issues, but I thought it was interesting during the draft. Um, McVeigh mentioned how much Corum reminds him of Kyron. And so it, to me, it feels like they got Blake Corum as uh, insurance because Kyron had a uh, foot issue his rookie year he had the sprained ankle that put him on ir last year he broke a bone in his hand in the playoff game against the lions that required surgery and he was going to if the rams had somehow won that game he was going to miss the next week um and uh then he dealt with a knee issue um during otas this year and missed all of otas so i think that they got quorum as kind of insurance for kyron yeah, it makes total sense, and it was just amazing how last year we knew right away with Cam Akers and Kyron Williams, we saw in that first game that Kyron Williams was going to be a big, big issue all year long. Let's go to the receivers. One of the huge surprises, maybe not to you guys, but to the general public, was the success of Puka Nakua. So my question is, of course, we're ba we're debating right now, Cooper Cup versus Puka Nakua. Has he surpassed Cooper Cup? Is that possible? The offensive player of the year from a few years ago. Talk about the wide receiver group as a whole before we get into tight ends here because just two fantastic dynamic wideouts for the Rams last year heading into 2024. Cooper remains the alpha. <laughs> I don't know what that means in terms of like who's going to get the most targets, who can get the most yards, but Puka defers to Cooper in everything. Cooper yeah. is a Super Bowl MVP. Cooper is a former Triple Crown winner for the receivers. Like he is just so well respected in that locker room. Um, Puka actually spent the offseason training with Cooper, um, just conditioning and stuff like that. And apparently the first day Puka was throwing up in Cooper's bushes. Um, so th there's like a big, you know, th there's a difference, right, between the rookie trying to repeat his success second year versus like that veteran craftsman who has won a Super Bowl, has a really deep connection with the quarterback. Um, and this year, Cooper's finally healthy. Like he last year, he was dealing with his uh, hamstring or his, sorry, his ankle sprain going into camp and he pulled his hamstring. He re-injured an ankle during the season. So he just really was never fully healthy last year, even when he was on the field. Um, 
we expect him to be a little bit healthier this year, as long as nothing breaks the wrong way. And uh, I, you know, if you're asking me to predict who's going to come out, you know, as like the fantasy receiver one out of that room, I have no idea. You mentioned tight end, which is interesting. Tyler Higby, his progress. How is he doing? Colby Parkinson, like you said, very effective blocker, comes over from Seattle here. So talk about the tight end position, the role it will have in this offense, high passing attack, really efficient run game. Curious how the tight end position figures here in the Rams attack. So Tyler tore his ACL in the wild card round of the playoffs. So that's in mid-January. It's going to be a tough road back for him. Um, you know, he's definitely going to start out on the uh, PUP list. He's definitely going to miss some games. How much? We don't know. I mean, it's a tough injury and he's a little bit, you know, on the other side of his career when it comes to how quickly you can heal from those sorts of things. Uh, and the Rams definitely got some insurance for however long he's going to be out with Parkinson. Parkinson is a really good run blocker. He's, you know, capable in the receiving game, but I think that they can kind of, you know, take the money ball approach to Higby's injury because they've also got Davis Allen, who is a really, really good pass catching tight end at Clemson and had some really good flashes at the end of last season, showing some rapport with Matthew Stafford. So I think you're going to see a lot of those guys and, you know, Sean McVay, you might see those guys back on the field together in 12 personnel. Well, I have to go to the defense with you now, of course, no Aaron Donald, future Hall of Famer, legend, one of the greats of the game. Defense really stepped up here, played well, helped the Rams in the playoffs. Sort of underrated when you think of the McVay attack and the greatness of the offense. Talk about how the defense you think is going to look this year changes, of course, with no Donald there. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of anybody's guess. Like, if you ask me how good are, can the Rams repeat win 10 games again this year, right? Like, it all hinges on that defense. But I do think the offense is good enough that the defense doesn't have to be as good as last season. You, you can't expect it to be after losing Aaron Donald. Um, but they are trying to, again, money ball, replace him in the aggregate. Kopi Turner is stepping up as a second-year player who was really, really good last year opposite Donald. Uh, now he's going to pair up with second-round pick Braden Fisk, who the Rams traded a future second to move up about 17 spots and go get him. Um, Jared Verse was their first round pick. He's Fisk's Florida State teammate. They have a really nice chemistry and they both fit into the culture of that front line where both Kobe Turner and Byron Young were just like Fisk and uh, Verse didn't start out in Division I football or they started out lower tier Division I football and had to work their way up mm -hmm. and earn their spot in the NFL. Um, so it's really an interesting group up there and they're going to try to replace Donald's production. I, I mean, it's going to be completely different though, because every week last season for the last 10 seasons, they knew that opposing defense offenses were game planning specifically around Donald. And that was going to create these certain things that you can do. And it's, it's going to be a change. Um, you're going to need a lot of help from the uh, back seven too. You're going to need uh, Ernest Jones to really step up at middle linebacker. He's someone the Rams think they can build around. Uh, they're going to need some veterans like Tredavious White to really help out in the secondary, especially after losing Jordan Fuller and Akella Witherspoon. So it's going to be, you know, I, I have questions about what this defense is going to be. I know it's not going to be the same, but, um, you know, it's going to be an interesting challenge for first-year coordinator Chris Shula. Very true, Adam. Great stuff as always. One more question we will get you out of here. I think part of the reason that maybe people outside of, of Rams fans and, of course, the organization, the beat reporters like yourself, are surprised with the Rams is because the players don't play a lot in the preseason. Uh, and that's why last year I think maybe people were surprised. But it was a fantastic 2023. Rams average projected schedule per Vegas uh, opponent win totals. Very much uh, average right now in the middle of the road. So 2024, talk about it. What do you see as the expectations? San Francisco has a very difficult schedule. Worst rest disadvantage that has existed in many, many years. How do you think the Rams are going to do this year? And how do you think it, it matches up with that schedule going into 2024? I think this offense is going to be like similar to that 2018 offense where it just really took the league by storm. I think that they're going to add some wrinkles now that that group other than Jonah Jackson has been together for a year. Like it's really everybody's returning except they added, 
even more beef inside for their duo blocking game. Um, I think it's going to be a really fun offense. I think it's going to elevate their floor and their ceiling. I don't know what the defense is going to be, and it's really difficult to say. That said, I think the offense is going to be good enough to cover up a lot of things. I think that they're going to you know, be one of the top five offenses in the game this year. And I think that that will help them. You know, I, I think they'll hit their over. I think they'll make the playoffs again. You know, Matthew Stafford is still top two, top three quarterbacks in the NFC. You know, you got Jalen Hurts. You know, Goff is kind of in that conversation. But after that, the quarterbacks kind of drop off in terms of who's proven in the playoffs and such. So I, I think you're going to see the Rams be able to, you know, return to the playoffs and maybe get a little bit luckier with their first round matchup. Explosive offense and defense, if it improves and stays strong with the loss of Donald, definitely a team that can make a deep, deep run in the playoffs. Folks, Adam Grossbard on exit. Adam Grossbard, Rams beat reporter for the Orange County Register inside SoCal Sports. He's fantastic. Gives us great insight. 10 minutes, sir. He did a great job. Thank you so much. We'd love to check back with you in August. NFL is here. July 4th's coming. We're going to be in the season before we know it. We can't wait. Adam, thanks for a few minutes. Thanks, Mike. The NFL Team Preview Series is sponsored by Boom Fantasy, your top choice for daily fantasy sports action. Boom Fantasy has the most innovative games that cater to both casual and hardcore fans. Win up to 500 times your entry only at Boom Fantasy. Download now on the App Store and Google Play. Use promo code FTN to get a no-sweat bonus up to $100.